Good morning. Sir, uh, the Philippine the President and the President scheduled to attend the launching of the U.S. Philippine Society. Can you please give us a brief background of this organization and what's the mission or main goal of this organization? The U.S. Philippine Society is brand new. It was founded in May of 2012 here in the city of Washington. It uh, came together as a result of interest on the part of both Americans and Filipinos who have observed that other countries have societies that pay attention to those countries and the bilateral relationship between the United States and those countries, such as the U.S.-Japan Society, the U.S.-Korea Society, the U.S.-Indonesia Society, but there was no such organization dedicated to the Philippines. So a group of us put our heads together and decided the time has come for such a society to exist. And with the president of the Philippines, who is still relatively a new president, coming to Washington, our idea was to get the society launched, to do a launching dinner, to honor the president of the Philippines, and to uh, call together, uh, get to the tables, uh, those Americans and Filipinos who are interested in an organization that is going to raise the profile of the Philippines in this part of the United States, to focus on such things as our, uh, our long history, uh, with, with all aspects of the history, and nowadays on the economic relationships, uh, the trade and investment relationships, on the new security relationship here in the 21st century, uh, but also on areas such as the environment and, um, and tourism, and very particularly culture, education, academic exchange of students and professors. We want to put uh, we want to raise the profile of the Philippines uh, uh, here in Washington. And there are four million Filipino Americans in this country who we feel uh, crave the same thing. Sir, uh, how will this be beneficial to both the U.S. and the Philippines? And how about to its, uh, particularly to its members, to Filipino Americans who want to be members of this society? Well, uh, the society is wide open for membership to both Filipino Americans and Americans. We're going to have, uh, we're going to uh, do events that are going to call attention to the Philippines, bring people up to date on the Philippines in a variety of areas in which they may be interested. So we're going to be very creative. We're, uh, we're going to do uh, opportunities for trade and investment. We're going to look at the political realities. We're going to look at the problems, such as how the Philippines is facing, uh, uh, is changing its education system to deal with a globalized world. We want to look at all aspects of Philippine culture, uh, art, dance, music, film, uh, all of those things. And we have some specific events planned for the fall of this year. Um, but uh, the idea is that people will join the organization, will have uh, membership, uh, rather modest dues, $75 a year for anybody who wants to be a member. We have higher levels of membership for people who want to be sustaining members and contributing members and things like that. But we'll even have a, a student category for $25 a year. And we will be doing events regularly uh, in a variety of venues uh, here in Washington, and not only in Washington. We want the society to have events in New York and in other large areas of the United States, particularly where there are Filipino-American communities. Sure, you already mentioned that it's a membership. Uh, if I'm a Filipino-American and I want to be a member, mm -hmm. where will I go in, or what is the presence they have there in your group? If you're a Filipino-American, or if you're an American who knows the Philippines and wants to be associated, it's very simple. Uh, we're going to have our web, our website is just about up and running, uh, and uh, you'll be able to just go on the web and put in your information and, um, and, and join, and we will keep you informed about all the activities. We're going to do more than that. We're going to ask you for ideas on what the society should be doing. We want this to really be a society, which means interaction and community. And we have a little office here. Uh, but um, we have plans on where to hold uh, events here in the city of Washington. We'll hold events, for example, with universities here. 
Uh, if the event is big enough, we'll hire an auditorium. Uh, but we will be sustained uh, by A, uh, the contributions of uh, the both Filipino and American uh, uh, entities, individuals, and businesses, and B, the individual memberships. So we recall that during the people power transition to democracy, you were the director of the Philippine Affairs as a department state. And how would you describe the Philippines then, and how it has grown until now? Well, back in the mid-80s, it was a different world. Um, back in the mid-80s, uh, the Cold War was still going on. Uh, a very important part of the Philippine-U.S. relationship had to do with the existence of bases in the Philippines. We always had strong people ties, we always had strong economic ties, and they certainly continue. Here we are uh, in the year 2012 in a globalized world. Uh, we have, a, a, I would say, a, a more mature Philippines, more mature politically, more mature economically. Um, we have, uh, we still have strong um, economic uh, relationships. We want to make them stronger. That's a private sector thing, and we see the ways for that to, to happen. Um, there is a, a, a healthy security relationship between the United States and the Philippines. The United States is um, more interested in Southeast Asia than it has been in more recent years, and the Philippines uh, uh, is, uh, is a key part of that, and we're seeing manifestations of it, uh, of, of, of it right now. Um, and then there is the whole range of issues uh, that our countries, uh, and in which our countries share interests, such as environment, uh, such as, um, for example, environmental tourism. Um, uh, such as um, uh, uh, opportunities uh, to work together to alleviate poverty. We have many non-governmental organizations uh, that are interested in the Philippines. We want to see them thrive. And uh, one of the things we really want to see, too, is more contact uh, between uh, 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 universities, uh, more attention to educational issues, and a lot of attention to everything having to do uh, uh, with health as well. So it's a broad-based, and culture across the board. A key interest of mine is films. I think a lot about the Philippines can be manifested uh, through the Philippine independent filmmakers, and there's an exciting uh, uh, community there as well. Sir, let's go back to the society. Uh, sure. What is the mandate of the society, and what would be the composition of its members, uh, or the composition of the Okay. Uh, the society has two co-chairmen. The Philippine co-chairman is a uh, businessman, uh, Manuel uh, Panginian, uh, and uh, the American co-chairman is Ambassador John D. Negroponte. We have uh, two honorary co-chairmen, one Filipino, and that would be um, uh, Washington Sisip, and one American, uh, Maurice uh, Greenberg, who has been connected with the Philippines over a long period of time. And then on the board of directors, we have, at current count, we have 10 Filipinos <laughs> from the business community primarily, but not exclusively. And at this count, we have 13 on the American side, which includes American citizens, and of course, they are American citizens, but they're Filipino American citizens who are really, who, who, are, who, are, who are really interested, but we're, we're all together. And we're still at it. And, 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 uh, and I, I don't want to go down a list because I'm sure to leave somebody out. <laughs> but it's at current, the, there, were, there are 23 members of the, uh, of, of the board of directors. I'm just wondering, why did you launch the U.S. Citizen Society just now? Uh, to take advantage, just now, of the visit of the President of the Philippines, which is, in my view, historic, uh, because President Aquino represents something that is new, represents something generationally new, his age, where he comes from, his background. Uh, it represents a new chapter in the Philippines in terms of bringing uh, uh, assurances to the Filipino people about, uh, about uh, if you look at the campaign that elected him, it's good governance, <laughs> uh, um, uh, modernity, uh, all positive things that uh, that the United States wants to identify with. So there is this. So it's it's so it's that that visit. 
plus uh, the fact that uh, th those of us who have been talking about a society, which is ex over the past year we've been talking about it, we thought this was the exact moment to launch. Uh, uh, and additionally, uh, you've had uh, uh, the interest of, uh, of uh, the Philippine ambassador here, who comes out of the private sector ambassador, uh, Joey Quisia, who understood the need for such a thing here. But I want to underline one thing about the society, and this is very important. The society is independent. It's connected with neither, I and mean, it's not funded by neither the U.S. government nor the Philippine government. It's nonpartisan. It's nonpolitical. <laughs> it's independent. Uh, it's it's self-sustaining, uh, and uh, we're not going to be drawn into any political coloration in either country. Uh, we want to see the emphasis on the Philippines, on the Filipino people, and on the U.S.-Philippine relationship. Thank you. <laughs>